Welcome back to part 2 of my walkthrough for Final Fantasy X. We are standing near the ruins of Bash Temple, or actually this is Bash Temple. The first thing that we're going to do is collect a high potion, and to do that we needed to take that left, but right there. And now we're going back and we will unlock a cutscene if we move forward. We're being watched. It's funny how Tida seems to have a, a knack for falling. I mean, this is we're at the start of of the game, and he already he's already fallen like fallen like what three times? Kind of insane. And you guessed it, we are going to have to battle these Sarajins. We only have to get rid of two of them. Hey, <laughs> missed me. Hit me. Uh, we don't have we won't have to get rid of the third one because well we're going to get a little help. Here comes the big fish of the pawn. I guess that Saji knows better. Now this is a fight that we unfortunately unfortunately can't win at this point. Uh, the bottle will automatically end after two or three turns, so you don't have to worry about it. Just strike him. Uh, that was powerful. You can't really die in this fight, I believe, so you're all good. I guess the fish decided that he, instead of killing us first, he's just going to swallow us whole. Uh, well, I guess did, that didn't work that well. That was close. But we managed to escape and we are inside Bash Temple now. I had made it out of the frying pan and into the freezer. I thought I was going to die in this place. Well, let's not be so dramatic yet. And by the way, guys, uh, as per usual, if you're used to my walkthroughs, you'll know that there are always the annotations that will allow you to skip to the key points of uh, each episode. So, you know, if you only want to watch a specific part, all you need to do is click on the annotations that are on the bottom of the video. And that way you can skip to all the parts that that really matter. So what we need to do right now is start a fire. Tidus is cold apparently. I'm surprised he wasn't cold when he was inside the cold water. Uh, well, apparently he only realized that he's cold now. The remains of a campfire with flint and tinder. You could start another fire here. So that's what we need to do. Let's go collect some items. 
First things first, let's pick up the eater right here. Now let's go upstairs. We can pick up the withered bouquet, bouquet, right here. And if we go through here, we'll find another chest containing a high potion. There we go. High potion. Well, let's get out of here. If they let us through. And now we're going to the opposite side near the safe point to heal ourselves and obtain the next item on the list, which is the flint. So all we need to do is go to, to do is go to the opposite side. Touch the safe point to heal yourself. You can save your game if you want. I don't think there's any point. And there we go. And now we can go and start our fire. And we will witness another cutscene. Seems we're being watched yet again, but Tidus doesn't care, he's going to sleep. I need food. You'll notice that Tidus has a tendency to whine a lot, uh, that's just how he is. He's not that bad though. It was a bad call. Your team lost because of you. You came to say that? It's been 10 years. I thought you'd be crying. Who? Me? You cried. Bahamut likes to tease Cloud, a uh, Cloud, sorry, <laughs> uh, Tidus. No, you won't, because we have to deal with this voyeuristic monster uh, called the Click, and yeah, we're going to have to fight him. You creep! The Click has a thousand and five hundred HP. Uh, once you reduce his HP to half, uh, you'll get some assistance. Um, don't be afraid to use potions in this fight, because well. You most likely you'll need them, and you can actually die in this battle. So, yeah, better be safe than sorry. Missed me, and here comes the cavalry. And I guess she's gonna join us and this is Riku, of course, everyone knows who she is. Um, fantasy girl to a lot of Final Fantasy fans for some reason, uh, but I ain't judging. She can steal items from the enemies, 
she's the only person who can the character who can steal at this point and she can also use items so we're going to demonstrate the use of a grenade right now Tida you need a potion badly dude um, there's a there's an achievement for um, for Riku um, she can let me just throw another grenade uh, she can if you steal 200 times with Riku you get a trophy uh, I'm pretty certain you can steal a bunch of uh, grenades from this guy, you can just keep stealing as much as you want. Another grenade, very nice. Well, that's the only weapon we have. Another grenade, thank you very much. And I really don't think that there's a point in dragging this fight a lot longer. So... Now well, let's finish it off. Unfortunately we didn't get an overkill, but that's okay. At this point we really don't need it anyway. Tidus gets a level up. Um, for those of you wondering the way the overkills in this game works, um, it's um, every monster in this game has an overkill hit points. And what that means is that if you deal... Um, if a character lands a, a killing blow equal or greater than the monster's uh, overkill hit points, then you'll get an overkill. And the advantage of finishing a monster or a boss with an overkill is that not only will you gain more AP, but you will also gain better items, or uh, not better items, but double the amount of items or something like that. So yeah, you should always strive to try and overkill uh, your enemies. At this point it's a little bit hard still, but because uh, the only really way, the, the only way we'd gain an overkill at this point was if Riku's grenade hit it for uh, damage below 400, uh, but that was going to be random anyway, so yeah, that's that just wasn't possible at this time. But as we, our characters get stronger and so on, um, we will be able to obtain more overkills and rest assured that in every boss fight I'll always tell you how the, 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 the boss's he, uh, overkill hit points so that you know how much you need to damage him for in order to get an overkill but like I said at this point it really doesn't matter yet <laughs> His mouth is shaking, that's kind of weird. Kid, it's die job. Hey, that hurts. Usujek, rain? Whoa. Okay. Hey, nurse. <laughs> I said I don't understand. I think he's telling you to put on the glasses. Fed. He said you can stay if you make yourself useful. You you understand me? All right, I'll work. Well, we'll work in a little bit. First things first, let's go over here and collect our first Albed Primer, volume number 1. 
that tells that y equals a. Um, as you've guessed it, uh, we need to collect uh, 23 of these in order to learn the Albet alphabet and then we'll be able to decipher their language. Let me heal myself up again. And now we can talk. Sure. This guy gives us potions and if you come back after you dive you'll also gain even more potions. And now we're going to get a little tutorial on how to use the sphere grid. So, uh, in Final Fantasy X, as most of you know, uh, your characters don't level up. Instead, we have this sphere grid system that allows us to learn uh, different abilities and boost our stats as we move along the sphere grid. Uh, there are different categories of spears, of spear grids, obviously. Um, so yeah, they're pretty much explaining it though, so I don't know why I'm bothering telling you precisely the same thing. But however, I can tell you that there are, uh, there are, there are lots of types of spear grids of spears but and you collect them by fighting monsters but um, the main types are power mana speed ability and fortune spheres and they will allow you to boost your stats uh, for example the power spheres will allow you to boost to unlock uh, hp spheres uh, hp uh, nodes uh, strength nodes and defense nodes uh, mana uh, spheres will allow you to unlock MP, Magic uh, and Magic Defense nodes. Uh, speed, I believe, will allow you to unlock Agility and Evasion and Accuracy nodes. And Ability Spheres will allow, you, will allow your characters to learn abilities. Um, as they're saying, you gain... Uh, every time you, you gain more and more AP, you'll gain um, a Spear you'll gain a you'll you'll increase a level which will allow you to you, or you'll gain a sphere level which will allow you to move across the grid since we're using uh expert the expert grid um, or the advanced grid it's going to we uh, we can pretty much move around as much as we want and learn and s and switch between the characters grids different characters grids um Yes, we want to move there. Yeah, and once we decide that we're going to make a move, we can't go back. And it's like the game say, it says, if you pass a node that has an ability or a skill that you can learn, uh, you'll have to actually travel back in case you skip it. Obviously, we don't have as many spheres, but they just this is just a demonstration, obviously. Uh, so in this case, we want to learn an ability, so we have to use an ability sphere. So yeah, in this case, since we can't really move forward, the only ability that we could learn is Shear. Uh, so 
So yeah, once you select the ability sphere, uh, you will be able to unlock, uh, in this case, the ability node, and that way, Tidus, or Tidus, sorry, you will learn the ability Shear. Uh, the other sphere, that the next one, is a defense sphere, so you'd have to use a power sphere to unlock it. Um, it's a defense node, sorry. Don't worry, because as you fight monsters, you will gain these spheres, so it's not like you'll be lacking them. Uh, every monster in the game gives you something, so you're all good. So yeah, what basically what this means is that um, if you, one of your characters activates a node, but then another character pass, follows the same path, they can they will be able to unlock the sphere as well. Right. Uh, this is very important for the expert grid because um, you don't want to, to have your characters go around randomly, otherwise um, you'll end up a weak jack of all trades and that's something that you don't want. And you press select, that's a pretty big grid, isn't it? We will. So let's go back to the menu, Sphere Grid, Tidus. Um, now just a quick, a small explanation here. As you can see, um, this is the Expert Grid. It's a little bit more confusing than the regular grid. So for example, Tidus starts here and Riku starts here. And what you'll notice uh, about the expert grid is that unlike the, the the simplified version of the grid, for example, if you went down instead of going up, this would be Tidus path. Uh, see, for example, here you learn Zaist. But if you went down, you'd, you'd enter Kimari's grid. And if you reached this spot right here uh, and went to this side, then you'd enter Oren's grid. Uh, for Riku, it's a little bit the same thing. If you went up, so if you, if you go through here, um, actually, if you go through here, you'll enter Riku's grid. However, if you go through this path right here, you'll enter Tidus grid. Tidus grid, sorry. Um, so, yeah, with the expert grid, it's a lot easier for you to make. Uh, your characters a jack of all trades in a matter of speaking. Uh, what I'm going to do is, is use an ability spear right now and learn the sheer ability. So that's that. Uh, there's no point in me. Uh, actually, I could move there and unlock a defense ability, but I'll do that in a little bit. So let's return to the main menu for now. Don't worry because I will be showing you all my sphere grid progression. And, and I'm going to end this episode right here. On the next episode, we're going down, we're going to the sea and help the Albed with whatever they have in store for us. So I hope you guys enjoyed this segment. Once again, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you soon. Take care, my friends.